So I learned something new this week on my trip to Narita, Japan. There are three actual farms that are operating on the airport. And this is a guy who just lives right here next to the taxiway. Uh, he refuses to sell his land. And I'm, we're taxiing. I'm like, well, what is this structure here? And Kevin said, you know what? I'll tell you about it when we get in the air. And yeah, it's a guy's house. He refused to sell. So he has his own private tunnel to get here. And it's actually different now. There's actually more walls around it. But first, I had to go shopping for my family before I head out to do my trip. This is what I do before every trip. I make sure the family has all the supplies they need because again, I'm gone and my wife has to do everything. So I go shopping, get all the last minute stuff before heading out for my job. This is my last trip of IOE, Dallas and Narita and back. And in case you don't know who I am, hi, my name is Darren. I'm a dad, airline pilot, and husband of a scientist. I've been flying for about 17 years and I'm currently a 777 FO for a major airline in Dallas. I plan on getting the airport early, but on the way out the door, my wheel decided to just fall off. So I had to fix it. Here's the schedule. Dallas and Narita leaving 11.45 a.m., arriving at 3 p.m., 13 hour and 15 minute block time, meaning gate to gate, a 26 hour overnight, and then flying back to DFW, leaving there at 6.30, arriving here at 4.15, 11 hour and 45 minute block time. I'd be paid 25 hours for the entire trip. Even though I'm training, I still get paid the full value of the trip, even though I'm not flying the whole trip. The captain, Jack Ehrman, FO is myself, our FB was 9300 number senior to me. He's a very senior FB. Uh, he could hold captain if he wanted to. The other FO was almost 6600 number senior to me as well. He can almost hold captain on the 777. We had nine flight attendants total, and they've all been here long in 30 years, and they were a spectacular group to fly with. They do this all the time. They, they were just pros at this. One of the first officers let me know about an app he uses to get our crew rest times. I had no idea how they divide up the crew rest. And he uses an app. There's on the app store. You just put in what time the cruise rest starts, what time it's going to stop. Generally speaking, it's whatever the captain wants as far as when they want to be back in their seat before arrival. And it'll give you the times. And that's it. And it's all in Zulu time. And we just put that on the piece of paper. And we give each other a 10-minute heads up before the uh, break is over. It's pretty darn easy. In case you didn't know, all airport parking is free for airline employees. The scariest part of my drive is our ride to the airport is on this crazy bus. The bus drivers, most of them are great, but some of them they absolutely scare me. I park in D South parking because I've come back to Terminal D. That's the International Terminal D at W Airport. I'll be coming to those doors two days from now. Head upstairs, cleared KCM, and went down to the crew room where the other three pilots were already there at the flight planning desk. Uh, talked to them for a few minutes, and then two of them headed out to go do the pre-flight stuff. I met the captain for the first time. We discussed a few things, and then I headed over to Starbucks first because I needed caffeine. It's a long day, right? Uh, you know, I'll, I'll be up until almost 2 in the morning on this flight. So I stopped by Starbucks, headed over to the gate, and when I got to the gate, unfortunately, everybody else had already, already gone down to the airplane, so I had to wait for a few minutes, and then a uh, employee came up and let me down the jet bridge. Long flight over there. Again, it was my leg, and I ended up flying both legs for this trip. Now, departing Dallas, we were on the Houdad 2 departure, and they have a climbing restriction at Yamal, 240 and 5,000 feet. We can't make that. Uh, we actually have, you know, we, we have, we can tell with our performance numbers that we can't make that today due to how heavy we are. So we had to call ATC clearance, let them know, hey, we can't make the, we can't make the restriction, and they ended up giving us a heading and a uh, out to the climb out at versus doing the normal sit. And you can see all the routing all the way across the ocean. Now we were in radar contact the entire time, so we didn't have to do any like lat longs or anything, um, even, even HF radio wasn't even needed because we were in radar contact the entire time. We did fly by, by, by Russia. It is an, a, a valid alternate, as I had in the previous video. And then we got closer to Tokyo, and I got up from my nap right before our top of descent into Tokyo. We thought we'd first get the Supak November arrival, and that's why I had briefed. We ended up getting the Supak Golf arrival. The biggest difference is for the Golf arrival, you go further south. It's just a way of having delayed vectors in order for spacing into Tokyo. The controls there are extremely good and accurate. Now, we ended up even not even doing that. They ended up giving us headings and speeds to fly, which was new to me, uh, you know, still having to descend and doing my mental math and flying the airplane to get to the plane where I think I should be. Now, we, we did end up going over, over Norma do the ILS Zulu approach for one six left into Tokyo, uh, Narita Airport, which is Narita. But anyways, uh, fairly standard approach. You know, the, the turn and the mandatory speeds and the altitudes, that did get me a little bit having to go down and slow down. I was able to handle it. Um, it was just a lot to do. You know, I've been up for a long time. We're all been tired. That's one of our threats coming in here. And I found it interesting in other countries, the DME is to the end of the runway, while in like the United States, the DME is to the wherever the localizer is. I have to make a great landing on one six left. Again, all the flight attendants 
and the pilot said it was a great landing. It's not just me. Uh, got to the gates, 73, and here we are. It's daytime, and I'm tired. And so we packed up our, our stuff. Uh, we weren't full going over there, so it was pretty easy to get everybody off the airplane and head up to the terminal. I came here years ago, like 16 years ago with my wife. It hadn't changed very much. Hopped on the bus, got to the hotel. The captain, one of the FOs, wanted to go out downtown, but I was far too tired. So instead, I... Uh, All right. Well, it is currently 5 p.m. in Tokyo, Narita, eh. and it is uh, 3 a.m. in Dallas. And right now, actually, there's a storm going through, which kind of bores me. You know, one thing that's different about this kind of flying versus my other kind of flying, I didn't fully really fly at 3 in the morning Dallas time, except for red eyes, right? Um, I haven't talked to my wife or kids since yesterday at... 11 a.m. We were late leaving Dallas. A little bit weird, right? And um, now she didn't see, send me text messages or emails that I got when I landed here, so I'm assume also okay. But there's a storm going through, and that's just a bit different. Um, I should have already included in this video. I did go shopping before I left for the trip. Anyways, how was the trip? That's why you're all watching this video. We left an hour late. Really bumpy leaving Dallas. Uh, pretty high winds. I did hand fly it to about uh, 13,000 feet. And this 200 seems more pitch sensitive than the 300 does, or just the bumps got me as far as the, the, the turbulence leaving Dallas. And we took a little bit more than a three hour break and I went to the bunk and I should have shown a video by now, but it's a very small bunk, nowhere nice as the 300. So for about an hour in there, couldn't get a good sleep in there because the tilt of the airplane is just different. And I wasn't that tired anyway. It was only like six in the evening at that point, Dallas time. Uh, I'm back in, and I did go sit in the first class seat for a little while, maybe 15 minutes. Then it was, break was over. Back up front for another three hours. And then on my second break, I did sleep well in the bunk. Very well in the bunk. I slept for a good two hours, 20 minutes, at least that much. Uh, and I had I, I thought I set my, my alarm correctly, but then... I was awake anyway, and then my, the phone went off and let me know I had 10 minutes to break, and that was the time my alarm was set for, so I made a mistake there. No, well. Uh, fully awake. Came back to the flight deck about 20 minutes before top of descent. Yeah. And so it's still weird coming back in the flight deck um, hundreds of miles from where I last flew. We did fly right by Russia. Um, I, did, it was still, I didn't see anything, but right before top of descent, so... I had pre-briefed the arrival before I went to break anyway. Uh, the arrival was okay. We thought we were getting in the Supak Echo. We got the Supak Golf. No, no, no Supak Echo, and then the North, and then the Golf. The Golf has us go down a little funny thing. But funny enough, uh, it was just for like delays. But we, we got to a fix, and then they gave us a heading and slowed us down. And that was kind of a new experience for me, going down, slowing down, slowing down, slowing down. That was different. Uh, came around. We landed on the one sixes, not the three fours. Interesting note on the three fours: you have to have your gear down on like an eleven mile final because of ice falling. They were about ice falling people's houses, whatever. On the one sixes, not an issue. Uh, got lucky again. I wish I had more of a crosswind in the real plane, but I didn't. I had, my, I had a headwind on both landings to here and in London. Uh, beautiful day. Great landing. Only thing I did on the short final. I was doing a little bit too much of the yoking movement. I said, no, hey, hey, because he's like, his Darren, it's fly by wire. So when you do this and then this, you're making three movements. So you're going from neutral to left to right and back here. Just put in what you need. It's similar to the Airbus. But he doesn't want to speak Airbus, even though he used to fly the Airbus. Uh, he's landing on one six left, right into the gate. And then uh, short walk to customs. And I was told early on, in a foreign country, follow the flight attendant. Find a flight attendant, a senior, they're all senior. <laughs> follow them, you won't get lost. So I was literally following this flight attendant, and he went to a little grocery store. <laughs> I'm like, do you have following you? He's like, oh, okay, well, I'm going to get some strawberries first. I'm like, okay, I'm going to follow you. And he got the strawberries, and we went outside to the bus, and um, short ride to the airport. I'm going to take a nap. It's 5 in the evening here. Um, take a nap. I probably won't go out tonight. Maybe I'll go out. I don't know. We'll see. But that is my third flight on the 777 200 and uh, one flight left, and I'm off IOE. All right. It continues.
<laughs> I woke up from my nap around 10 45 p.m. and I realized that 7 Eleven is not 24 hours in this lobby. So I went downstairs at 10 45 to grab some random food. I had some money from Japan from our last trip 16 years ago. I didn't end up using it because the bag has some other countries in there, but I grabbed some random food, some halfway decent sushi, but it was enough to sustain me till 6 a.m. the next day when I woke up, had breakfast in the hotel, a very good breakfast, and then I started walking. I debated taking a, t a cab or Uber or, uh, you know, the bus, but you know what? I needed to walk. So I, I walked all the way to Narasan Park. It's a beautiful park. Uh, we came here years ago, and then I also went to the Narasan Shenzhen Soji Temple. I'm probably saying it wrong. It was an outstanding park and temple. This house you're seeing, by the way, it's an American house on the side of the road. I found it hilarious. But the Google Maps had me go through some random areas to get to the park. I enjoyed myself. And this park is so peaceful and tranquil and scenic. I mean, you can just hear the sound. It was a beautiful park. And it had a beautiful day. It was 80 degrees in Narita this day. But I walked around the park for quite a while. I, then I went over to the temple. I walked around that area. I'm not a religious person, so I didn't go inside the temples because it's not really my place. But I did respect them. I appreciated them. It was an amazing place to visit. If you have more time, it has so many things to see. And there's shops opening up. But again, this is like 9 in the morning. It's early. So not a lot was open at 9 a.m. Now, once I was done here, I did take a walk to the Aeon Mall. And on the way there, I passed a baseball game. Well, they're getting ready for a baseball game anyway. And it was pretty. I know the Japanese love baseball. But they were so per perfect and just enthusiastic and energetic watching this baseball game. Uh, practice anyway. Uh, at the mall, it's a standard mall. Um, inside, I didn't see anything ex exceptional. They opened right at 10 on the dot. So I had to wait outside till they opened. And it's a very standard mall, except for this giant arcade. I have never seen so many pick-your-prize things ever in my life. They also had Pachislo, I think, a... a um, slot machine but i know how to play it i want to learn how to play it one day because i love slot machines i love gambling but i was amazed at how many of the little arm things they have in this uh arcade i played them didn't win anything by this point i had walked over four miles so it's about 10 30 in the morning in narita so i need to head back to the hotel to get some rest uh i thought about walking back but i said you know what i should go ahead and take they had a shuttle service that takes me back so i waited right here by this little stop the correct bus came hopped on the bus got back to the hotel about 11 20 and had a short lunch in the room and then i went i took a shower got my room packed and went to bed and here i am right at 421 local 221 in dallas there's all my caffeine and the snacks i had before leaving the room bright sunny day outside in uh, japan hey it's currently 4 33 p.m 6 2 33 a.m in dallas Feeling good. Had about a three and a half hour nap before the uh, flight today. And I should have explained all this in the video so far, but came in last night, slept a lot. Woke up in the middle of the night, which was morning in, in Dallas, called the family, went back to bed again. So I slept like nine, ten hours last night. Woke up, uh, breakfast in the hotel, explored the city, came back, took another nap. So I, I'm very well rested, well rested. Um, I'm sure sometimes adrenaline, so we'll see how this flight's going to go. It is a shorter flight than what flight here. Let's do this. So departing Narita, we left from the same gate, gate 73, and the ramp had us go Papa 2, Papa 3, and then over the ground. Ground had us go Charlie all the way around, and we ended up having a few stopping points, and it was a long taxi. We had plenty of time to do all our checklists, and th at this point is where that little hot spot is. That's, where, that's near where that guy's house is. I'm like, what is this structure? But all the way around the airport over to one six right some people taking up one six left but we didn't want to rock the boat and one six right is longer anyway so got to the runway and it was my leg again i was happy to do it we did a, a full thrust takeoff out of here today that's gonna do how heavy we were lots of cargo on board uh we did the gobo to departure and i noticed in uh narita the departure controllers hold on to you much longer than I was expecting. Now, on the way out, we did have latitude and longitude waypoints. We were f flying much further south than we flew on the way there. So we did have to plot all the, the uh, lat, lat longs. So once we got into the lat long area, we were on HF radio and CPDLC, meaning we weren't on radar contact with anyone. And it was a long trip across the ocean. Uh, it was smooth until we had to uh, take a break. And then our first break, it was moderate turbulence for most of the trip. 
couldn't sleep very much, woke back up. And then I slept again until we got closer to Dallas, went over Amarillo. I walked back up to the flight deck. The uh, Victory 2 arrival, I thought I'd be going to 1-8 right, but we got 1-3 right, which I was actually happy to get because I had a quartering, well, more, more almost a direct crosswind on 1-3 right, and my first crosswind in the aircraft. So here I am, been up for a long time, doing a, my first crosswind landing. Again, this is only 10 knots. It's not a lot, but it was something. And I got lucky, and it was a great landing. So not lucky. I, I shouldn't say that. I used my, my flying abilities to make a great landing on 1-3 right. We taxied all the way around to Delta 27, I believe it was, parked there, and that was it. The uh, captain signed me off of IOE, said I was a, a great to fly with. He gave me a few pointers and said, you know, if I have any questions, give him a call, and that was the whole trip. Here's a one the shot of my aircraft that flew in. Uh, again, Boeing 777-200 ER. It does fly different than the 300. I don't have a favorite yet. Um, the 200... It, just, it seems more pitch sensitive than 300. It could just be my imagination. They've only flown their plane now four times. But got to go inside, clear customs, and head out the exit to across from where I entered just two days prior. It's hot in Texas. Hope I can get rid of the background noise. Last trip on the uh, 777 IOE is complete. 777-200 was Narita, Dallas. I flew both legs. I flew to Narita and back to get my landings in. Great trip overall. Um, yeah. I'm glad I flew the leg back in here because the arrivals in Dallas can be tricky when they take you off the arrival and make you do weird things, and that's what happened today. Uh, landed one three right, had a little bit of a crosswind, it went zero four zero at like eight. Um, landing one three right, so quartering, quartering crosswind, qu tailwind. But they both, all three pots said I did a great job again. Uh, my flight attendants were amazed that I did both landings because they're both really good landings. So, uh, on that, uh, slept two, had two rest breaks. We had moderate turbulence my entire first break, didn't sleep very much. And then my second break, I had maybe an hour of sleep. We had turbulence again. Just my luck. Um, yeah. It's still funny that this is my, funny in a funny way, this is my job. I get to fly this giant airplane, like me. I landed a 280 passenger, 280 soul plane today. With the help of my crew members, but with my hands. But I'm going to go home, get some rest. I have the rest of the month off. My first day of reserve is Sunday. Thank you for following along. Once I was home, I got to have my youngest on my lap. We watched some, I forgot who this is, but it's some kid <laughs> doll TV and relaxed. Uh, as far as my compensation, I'm on year seven pay. I'm at 286 an hour. I'll be paying 25 hours of pay. That's the number there. I get international pay. It's something we have here called an override. It's actually 125 bucks. Then my per diem, 170 bucks. So my total for the trip was 74.51 and 50 cents. Pretty good money for a being gone for three days of the month. Of course, most people do this three times a month. That can be a very good paycheck for working nine days a month, but I will not be that senior. As always, I appreciate your support. Have a great day. And as always, thank you for stopping by.